This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'm excited today because I'm sharing A Shimmer of Possibility by Paul Graham, a book, a set of books that I've been wanting to share for about a year now. I've owned this set for a little over a year, and ever since then, I've wanted to share more about this. A lot of people have seen the books on the shelf, and they've either been curious, like, what are all of those purple books? Or it's someone who knows about this and they're like, you have to put this on the channel and share it because it's very interesting. It's one of my favorite books to put in front of people. If I have friends over and they have no context or history, they have never seen it before, I love putting it in front of them and just watching them respond or react or not respond or react. I think I've put off making this video for a while just because I know it's going to be hard for me to convey exactly what it is this book does for me and, uh, you know, what I get from it when I look through it. But hopefully through the work and through, you know, me sharing what it is I get from it, hopefully you will as well. A Shimmer of Possibility consists of 12 volumes that all come in this box set together. Sometimes an entire volume is dedicated to one location or one scene. Sometimes it's a mix of several different places or moments. The work contains a lot of sequences where you see things changing very little frame to frame. You know, you can tell that it's really, really close moments together. Sometimes you can't even tell if there really is a difference and you sort of feel that extended focus or attention because of that. The vast majority of the work here is a lot of very normal, everyday, almost like nothing is going on. Upon first viewing, and for most people I think when they look at this work, it seems like there's really nothing there, and he's just sort of taking pictures of nothing over and over, uh, you know, waiting for things to change. Some things do change a little bit, sometimes they don't. And sometimes it's bouncing back and forth. Sometimes you'll see two sequences, you know, kind of moving forward, but you're going back and forth. As you're flipping the page, you're sort of bouncing between two different stories, two different moments. Sometimes they do feel like they can kind of go together. And shooting everything and putting the sequences this way where you sort of feel step by step, uh, sometimes it kind of builds this anticipation. And, you know, and sometimes that pays off. Sometimes you're left with a blank page and you're, you're wondering, you know, what comes next. And you sort of feel that, like, suspense there. The first time the book really struck a chord with me, uh, it felt a bit like I was retracing my walks in my head. Um, if I'm out walking with my camera and I see certain things, especially if I'm not walking around with my camera and I don't have, you know, a way to stop and make a photo, those sort of things, it's like a, a mental snapshot that I'll just keep seeing in my head. And even when I'm walking around, I'll kind of retrace my walks in my head and I'll think about all the different things I've seen. And, uh, you know, it, it keeps me up at night. It haunts me. And looking through this work and just sort of the, the frantic back and forth, looking at different things and, and the natural way that our eyes and our attention sort of bounces and looks at things, you think nothing is there, but maybe... Probably not. There's, you know, there's nothing there in front of you, but maybe there could be. Probably not. Maybe, you know, you kind of keep coming back to it. It's like you're never really sure. And that's like the story of my life with my camera and just, you know, making pictures. I'm never 100% sure and I never really know why or what it is that I'm going for or what I'm looking for. But uh, for whatever reason, it holds my attention. And I think that sort of feeling of like bouncing back and forth with the attention and all of the little things that possibly could be, um, it just, it really struck a chord with me. And that just completely changed how I looked at this, how I looked at other books, my own work, that feeling of just looking and not really sure what you're looking for, but you've got your camera just in case and you're just looking around, keeping an eye on things. That's what I've always done with the camera. That's why I pick up a camera. That's why I always have one with me. And I think a lot of photographers can relate to that. And looking at this book, just based on the work alone, you're not going to get the same feeling as, you know, looking at a book of, you know, these amazing landscapes. But looking at just an actual photographer's perspective, you know, navigating life and just moving through the world and the world moving around him, uh, it's like palpable. It's exciting when you're flipping through it and you feel like you've been in that position before. Just looking at the world with your camera, everything moving and changing around you, even just normal everyday scenes, mundane or not, life is life. It's always evolving, it's alive, and it's flowing at all times. 
Paul Graham talks in this video on Louisiana Channel. It's a video called Photography Lacks Intentionality. I highly encourage you to check out this video. It's definitely worth watching, especially if you enjoy this work and if you're interested in this work. It's a great video. Paul shares a lot of thoughts and work from all over his career, but specifically talking about Shimmer, it was really great to hear where his mindset was. In comparison to painting, he talks a little bit about, you know, brush strokes and how every brush stroke, it's always very intentional and you can feel the artist has crafted every single aspect of this specifically to their vision, whereas a photographer steps out in the world, everything is happening, and then just in one moment with the click of a shutter, everything happens just in that one instance. Letting life kind of guide you and just accepting whatever it is it gives you, he talks about embracing that and letting life kind of lead you because life isn't always going to conform to every single vision that you have. You can't always make that picture that's always in your head or you can't always get something that you see. Paul kind of leans into that feeling of not having control and you know all of your assets and all of these things that you can use you don't have control over all of that. You know, he talks a little bit about life sort of being his collaborator, you know, as an artist and, and he's working with whatever life gives him. And I think myself and a lot of other photographers can relate to that sort of sentiment where you don't really know exactly what it is you're looking for. You don't really have a specific goal in mind, but you have your camera with you. You're always looking, you're always, you know, ready for something. And more often than not, you know, this book, I mean, a lot of people will look at this and go, what, what is this? You know, this isn't, this isn't photography. This isn't art this isn't work. But I would say most photographers, if you ask them, you know, what it looks like to be a photographer, it's probably a lot of this. It's a lot of back and forth, a lot of kind of, you know, maybe, I don't know, you know, it's, it's a lot of questions. There's not really any definitive answers in this book. And I think that's what I love about it. It's definitely not a cheap book, but I will put links down below if you're interested. I'm glad I have this one on the shelf just because as inspiring as it is, I also love just putting it in front of people and getting their reactions. And I hope to get the same reaction from you all. I'm excited to hear, you know, what you think. And hopefully if you haven't been able to see this work, I hope this was helpful and, you know, gave you a better look for it for yourself. Uh, and I'd like to make a little bit of that money back that I spent on this book a little over a year ago. So let me tell you a little bit about our sponsor today, which is Squarespace. When I launched mattdayphoto.com almost a decade ago, I did that with Squarespace. This was years before they ever sponsored my YouTube channel. I chose Squarespace because they truly are the best all-in-one place to build a website. It was a no-brainer because back then they had everything I needed, and nowadays they continue to add new features all of the time, and everything is still extremely easy to use and user-friendly. Of course, if you need some assistance with anything, they're always there to help. Squarespace has 24-7 award-winning customer service. If you want a place to show off your work or run an online store selling digital or physical products, you can send out an email newsletter, run your blog, everything you possibly need is built right here into this one service. We're always scattering things all over social media and different platforms. Give everything a home at Squarespace. You can sign up for Squarespace for free at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to sign up, go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you all so, so much for supporting everything I do here on the channel, sharing books with you, sharing my own pictures, uh, just where life is and what I'm up to. I appreciate all of you sticking with me. And uh, if you have any questions at all about this work or your own thoughts, I'm sure some of you have plenty. Let's hear it and uh, keep the conversation going in the comments down below. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I love you all very much and I will see you soon.